day, the OC housewives go wild in San Diego. Survival legend Boston Rob joins us to talk Island of the Idols. Let me see if I can tell you how it's gonna work. And blast from the past, South Beach toast Bernice tells us about her post-reality life. I know what I gotta do, ma'am. I'm here to repossess your car. This is your reality check. Was that weird? That's weird. Everybody, it is way back Wednesday here on Reality Check. I am your host, Lindsay Rodriguez, and on the show today, we're gonna have Boston Rob from Survivor, Benice from South Beach Toe, but first up, we have People's Reality TV expert Dave Quinn. He is here to break down Hello. the top five. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Good. I'm just as exciting as those other two people. You really. <laughs> are always exciting. It's always wonderful to have you here. I have been thrown from a parking garage yet. Yeah, well, you don't know what's in store for the rest of the show, happen. so uh, keep seated, all right? Let's go and break down our top five. At number five, teen mom's OG Corey Wharton and girlfriend Taylor Selfridge are expecting. The couple who met during season one of X on the Beach confirmed the exciting news to people on Wednesday. In a statement, the Are You The One star says, Corey's hoping for a girl, and I'm just blessed to be having my first child. Meanwhile, Corey, who is already a father to a two-year-old son, Ryder, expresses excitement and says he can't wait to share the journey with everyone. Aww. So look, sometimes these dating reality shows really work. Yeah. If you were gonna go on one, which one would you choose? Oh, I mean, that would be really hard. I, I would be terrible in most of them because I'm gay and there's like barely any gay <laughs> dating Well, shows. MTV, did I you the one? The I guess it would be fluid. that, but I'm yeah. not fluid. I mean, I'm so boring. I would I would probably uh, be better on like an HGTV show. Give me like a dating show in which I can find a new apartment. Okay. That's what I'm more interested in. Well, you just in. found a new apartment, so let's not have you move anytime soon because <laughs> yeah, moving in your, New York City is traumatic enough. It's terrible. <laughs> At number four, Miley Cyrus and Cody Simpson have gotten fresh tattoos. The new couple who recently made their romance official after years of friendship added a pair of coordinating, not matching, coordinating ink during a date night yesterday. The former voice judge got a bleeding heart with a knife pierced through it on the back of her right arm, while Cody got a skull and crossbones. The two showed off their new tattoos on social media, posing for black and white videos on their tattoo artist's Instagram. What do we think about these tattoos? A bleeding heart that's been pierced by a knife? Well, listen, back-to-back -back breakups, right? I guess she's had her uh, fair share of heartbreak and she's kind of reclaiming that. It said, what, rock and roll forever? Yeah. She's, that's I mean, it's pumped. a beautiful piece of work, but it just makes me think like, ooh, honey. W would you ever get a matching tattoo with somebody or a coordinating tattoo with a boyfriend? Uh, or? I mean, I've got, I've gotten to the tattoo parlor before with my partner and yeah. gotten, but like they weren't even remotely coordinating. I don't right. think I'd ever get something matching or a name, would you? I think you? they say, what, the, the, the people who tattoo together stay together? Is that what they say? Well, it so. didn't work for Winona Ryder and Johnny Depp. You That's had to get it changed true. to Wino forever. That's true. And look at Jackson, all the girls' names that he's had well, tattooed there you go. on his arm. So, no. <laughs> We're I'm gonna, gonna pass on it. It's a no from me. <laughs> At number three, all's well with Sarah and Wells. I'm talking, of course, about Sarah Highland and Wells. Adam, the couple recently celebrated their two-year anniversary. And on Tuesday, the two dedicated very sweet posts to one another on Instagram to mark the special occasion. The actress captioned her photo, if two years feel like a lifetime, then I can't wait to spend my eternity with you. Aww. How cute is that? Adams also shared a photo of the two from their engagement, which read, I knew I was gonna marry her the first night I met her. The couple have been dating since 2017 and got engaged in July. On a scale of one to 10, how obsessed are we with these two? 15, 25. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely adore them. I think that they have a real relationship that's very like down to earth and fun. I think they totally adore each other. And I love love. I am obsessed with people who are just like in it and are expressive. Yes. And I mean, there's a lot of risk in that, right? They're yeah, putting their true. hearts out. And I yeah. appreciate that they're brave enough to take the risk. Absolutely. Especially because she went through a lot in previous relationships yeah. with violence and all kinds of stuff. So I'm so happy to see her getting her happily Me ever too. after. Yeah. yeah. At number two, Encore host Kristen Bell is getting candid when it comes to raising her children. The reality show host says her and her husband, Dak Shepard, have chosen not to lie to their daughters, Delta and Lincoln. The actor spoke to people about being known for their truthful parenting style. And she she says, we give them the real answer and there's always some trepidation or anxiety when that's happening. Their truthful parenting style inspired the famous duo to, to actually create a commercial with food company Light Life, which pokes fun at their characteristic honesty. What are your thoughts on truthful parenting? Should kids be shielded from some things or is it better to be like, there is no Santa and we're all gonna die? Uh, well, maybe not that extreme, <laughs> but I do think that there should be some more realistic things. I always dreamed of creating like uh, brutally honest children's books in which you tell children what the real truth is. Like, 
sorry, not that you can't have this because if you're good, we'll mm -hmm. buy you something. It's we can't buy this because we're not millionaires, right. right? Like tell children what's up. Keep them all grounded. Yeah. And, yeah okay. That being said, I don't have any kids, so right. I don't know whether I should necessarily be doling out advice to parents. But yeah, me. I don't have kids either. So. I love them. I think they're awesome. They're parents. incredible. Yeah, they're yeah. Super love cool. them to bits. And at number one, such a satisfying name to say, Teresa Giudice, <laughs> right, is questioning the future of her relationship with her husband Joe. On Tuesday, Bravo released a clip of the season 10 premiere, and in it, the 47-year-old mother of four is at a crossroads in her marriage. So when asked by co-star Jennifer Aiden if she's still in love with Joe, Teresa says very frankly, I don't know. So Dave, you reported on this story. Yeah. What more information can you give us? We are going to see a lot of this in the new season of Real Housewives of New York. Uh, excuse me, the Real Housewives of New Jersey. There uh, is a lot in the beginning of just those first two minutes where Teresa really opens up about how she's feeling. She says that I haven't been happy in a very long time and I just want to be happy. She also seems to be canoodling with a new guy. She shares a photo of a guy shirtless that she had been with and she says this is the guy I hooked up with. Oh wow. So I'm not necessarily Really sure what that means for the future of her romance. She had said uh, that if Joe gets deported, that she would likely divorce him. Yeah, there seems to be. And he's a asked bit to be fracture. right. He's asked to be sent back to. Well, he's living in Italy now. Actually, yeah. he uh, left there on Friday. He okay. left the United States on Friday. He was at an ICE facility and wanted to leave that ICE facility. Yeah. So he's now in Italy. He has yet to be deported officially. Okay. He's actually trying to fight that. He's in the midst of uh, his third appeal. His first two were denied. So the third appeal, we'll find out what the future future of that is in mm. November. Wow. It's a really tough situation. Yeah, you have four kids four together. Kids. Yeah, and That's you really want them to stay together, not for the sake of the kids. You want him to stay in the United States for the sake of yes, the kids. Yes, absolutely. They need but their dad. She, yeah, but if she's unhappy in her marriage, you know, we kind of hope Maybe that time she to can move find on. something. Yeah, well, obviously that's going to unfold, I'm guessing, on the, the, the new season. Yes. Of course, you can go to people.com for further updates. This man right here will keep you informed and in the know. <laughs> Too much. Dave, thank you so much for joining me today. It's always a pleasure Thanks hanging out with you. Thanks for having me, as of always. Course. We are going to take a very quick break, but when we come back, we're talking to the legendary Boston Rob, so don't go anywhere. Vince, that's four votes Vince, three votes Karishma, one vote left. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Joining me now is the one and only Andrea Belke. She is the host of People Now, and of course, she is a three-time Survivor veteran. Welcome, lovely. So nice to be here, so and I time. love talking about Survivor, so it's perfect. Yes, you are our in-house Survivor expert, mm -hmm. so who better to join me in this conversation, because on the line right now is a Survivor legend. He's also a current mentor on Island of the Idols, and a good friend of Andrea's, Boston Rob. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you guys doing? We're fabulous. Wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> thanks so much for phoning in today because this season you're not competing. Instead, you and Sandra are mentoring selected contestants one-on-one -on, -one on Island of the Idols. So I'm curious to know what your reaction was when you walked up on the beach and saw the huge Boston Rob statue. Did that kind of get you in the feels a little bit? Yeah, I, did, I definitely don't need any ego boost while I'm out there. That's for sure. All I got to do is, you know, walk out to the beach and see a 25-foot large head of myself. <laughs> <laughs> like your own Mount Rushmore. And you're there with Sandra. Now, you two are very different players, but what are some of the things you really agree on when it comes to giving out advice? You know, Sandra and I go, uh, Sandra and I go back a long time. Like, fundamentally, we play the game very differently. But we both come from that old-school mentality where, you know, get an alliance, keep it together, and be loyal to it. Uh, when it comes to challenges, playing in challenges, Sandra is kind of as least as possible as good for her. And I'm more of like, you know, you got to get in there and do it. I think uh, for the most part, we agree on the advice that we give the contestants, but there's definitely times where you're going to see two different trains of thought. Yeah, what would you say is the biggest difference between you and Sandra when you give out advice? I think, like, personally, like, you know, we played together, Andrea. Like, I'm all about promoting teamwork, unity in the beginning, staying together, keeping the tribe strong. And from day one, when Sandra gets out there, I think she's out for her and her only. Mm. Which, you know, she's won twice with it, so she has a pretty good social game, and that approach works. But, you know, you got to get through the beginning stages. And for someone like me, 
I need a team around me to be able to do that. Yeah, you need a team around you, you need a buddy system, you need yeah. all of those things that did work on our first season. <laughs> well, also last week you mentored Vince, who succeeded in your challenge, and he won himself an immunity idol, but it didn't do much for his game, so why don't we have a look? Third person voted out. Vince, need to bring me a torch? Vince is leaving with an idol in his pocket. Vince, the tribe has spoken. It's so crazy he went home with an idol in his pocket. Who would ever do that? Right? Why wouldn't you just play the idol? Yeah. I went home with an idol in my pocket. Why? Because you feel safe. I don't know, it's hard. Okay. Um, yeah. Boss and Rob, what was your reaction when he didn't play his idol and he could have just saved himself? I felt bad for him. I mean, first of all, he took the risk to be able to get the idol, took the chance going into the other tribe's camp, and then once he got it, that idol was only good for two tribal councils. So it was either that one or the next one. And, like, you know, I play poker, so I understand risk versus <laughs> reward. I think, you know, playing the idol incorrectly would have been a lot less hurtful than going home with it in his pocket. I so agree. In that situation, you gotta play it. Even if you think your name's on the block at all, you gotta play it. Yeah, did you expect to see him get voted out so soon? I was kinda bummed to see him go, because yeah. he was a really fun character. Yeah, I liked Vince, you know, but that survivor, you never know, you never know. And it's usually when you feel the safest, is when you're going home. Mm -hmm. oh. That's really true. God, that sounds I, so The times intense. I was blindsided, I felt really safe and yeah. really confident. So wow. you know something's up. <laughs> Honestly, what you guys do out there is so impressive. And also, uh, Rob, you know, we told the Twitterverse that you were coming in today via Skype, and so we have a couple of fan questions for you. So Kieran yeah. actually wants to know, do you believe that Vesepia is an underrated winner? Oh, Vesepia, going back to the uh, fourth season, the first time I played, you know, Vesepia hasn't come back and played at all. I don't know if that's because she doesn't want to or, you know, like, uh, what's going on with that. I think uh, she played a drastically different style of game than I like. You know, she was very under the radar, which worked for her and her in that uh, fourth season. But nowadays, I think people would pick up on that, and I don't think she'd last as long. Mm. Interesting. Well, we have another fan question, and I would love to get your take as well on this, Andrea. A Survivor fan Courtney started auditioning for Survivor 12 years ago. So she tweeted, there are times I want to give up and forget about it. What advice do you have to give to fans who love this game and who want to play? So Rob, we'll take it from you first, and Andrea would love to get your uh, advice as well. Yeah, so I mean, if you applied 12 years ago, there's a chance that you're in a different spot in your life now than when they first saw that audition tape. So reapply, try again, you know, and tell them what's new about you right now. And if you've been applying every year for the last 12 years, if that's the case, then you got to switch it up. I mean, what, what you're doing is not working. So... The main thing is you have to be yourself when you apply to be on the show. I think that's paramount, but they want to see the heightened, most exaggerated version of yourself that you can give them. You get one chance to make an impression, so go big. I want to know, Rob, what was your hook for your audition video? I applied, like, uh, back when we used to send in VHS tapes, okay? <laughs> that's what was. And, uh... I was just after work one day, I was hanging out and I had this whole scheme planned where I was gonna be, we had a second refrigerator in our garage and I was gonna be in the refrigerator hanging out <laughs> and I tried to fit myself into the freezer and I couldn't fit, my mom was videoing it and that alone became a hilarious thing, <laughs> me trying to stuff myself in the refrigerator and I don't know, for whatever reason I was, they gave me a second call back and I was able to make an impression that you know, they gave me a shot. Incredible. Yeah. And then, Andrew, you got accepted first time you auditioned. Yeah, first time I auditioned, sent a tape in. I think it also was, I don't, know if it, I don't think it was VHS, but it was definitely a DVD, okay. a physical thing right. that we mailed in. Yeah. But I leaned into the farm girl route. So I was on the farm, riding my horse, catching pigs. Like, I did the whole thing. You need to find, like, what makes you special and, like, really lean into that because mm. the casting wants to see characters. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Courtney, best of luck, so keep at it. Mm -hmm. You've had advice from uh, two veterans here, so hopefully we'll see you on a future season. Right now, though, why don't we take a look at the preview for tonight's episode? Here it is.
When romance blossoms... Ooh, this is perfect. <laughs> Dean and Chelsea, that's something that has to get squashed. You must protect your secrets. One of you must come to the island of the idols. Whoever goes to blow up my game while flying blind. With showmance. Boss and Rob, what do you make of the possible showmance between Chelsea and Dean? Because you had a showmance with Amber, ended up marrying her, it worked out. Um, but what do you think it takes to pull off a successful showmance? Showmance is a dangerous. <laughs> I mean... As soon as anybody sees you as a couple or a pair out there, it's just another reason to vote you off. So coming from me, this may <laughs> seem like crazy advice, but avoid them at all costs if you want to win the game. Uh, I think that, you know, it definitely puts a mark on you that you don't need out there. So... I'd stay clear of them. Just mm. cuddle at night when no one's watching. But isn't just everyone like, always watching? Do you have cameras on you 20 well, Yeah, exactly. You shouldn't like... really have a showman. Yeah. It's a target on your back. I know, but here's the thing. If Boston Rob didn't have his showman, he wouldn't have that really cool painting in the background yeah. there, would he, right? Yeah. Four adorable they, they daughters. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Rob. Those showmances never work out. Well, <laughs> we're really glad that, you, that yours did. But if you had to give two or three tips to a newbie player who wants to play Survivor, what would those two or three tips be? Uh, first night you're out there, don't go to sleep. That's when most mm -hmm. of the alliances are made. Stay up all night when everybody else can't sleep. If you're the one person that's snuggled up in the corner getting some Zs, they're going to look at that as a reason to vote you out. Secondly, watch how they do sleep at night when you are finally sleeping because usually people that are in alliance together don't want to sleep next to someone they're not in an alliance mm -hmm. with. And the third thing is just try to stay in the majority. You know, you never want to put yourself in a situation where you're isolated or singled out or doing something different. Stay and do what the group does, especially in the early days. And that should keep you safe until you can build enough relationships that can, you know, take you through the game and weather, weather the storms. So interesting. Yeah. I read an interview with uh, Jeff Probst, and he was saying that if he could get any advice from Rob, it would be, teach me how to be better at observing. And now I oh, see yeah. exactly why. Those tips are incredible. Mm -hmm. So, Rob, thank you so much for chatting with us today. It's so great to see you back on our screens. And, Andrea, thank you for stopping by of as well. Course. Our resident Survivor expert. Make sure you tune in tonight to Survivor and every Wednesday, 8, 7 Central on CBS. And, of course, check out People Now. That airs noon every day. Right mm -hmm. over on yep. People TV and Twitter on Twitter. So we are headed to break right now, but on the other side, we have South Beach Toes Bernice catching us up on what life has been like since her show wrapped in 2014. Don't go anywhere. You is not going nowhere. Get out of my way, and I'm not playing. Play chicken all you want. Bernice, don't back down. Welcome back to the show, you guys. All right, get this. A couple of weeks ago, we aired a reality TV history moment from the cult favorite show, South Beach Toe, and it went viral. Take a look. I know what I gotta do, ma'am. I'm here to repossess your car. In this 2013 episode of South Beach Toe, Bernice is about to repo a car when she learns the owner isn't going away without a fight. Bernice gonna clear, man. I ain't got time for this. You ain't clearing I'm getting my car. The owner tries to back out, but Bernice stands her ground, which probably isn't the best idea. You ain't going nowhere. Oh, 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 oh my God, Bernice. Oh, my God. Bernice. Oh my God. Not only does she survive the fall. Bernice, I thought you were dead. She comes back to settle the score. I don't do that with you. Oh this time you know what the is going on. Bernice's big fall is one of the great moments in reality history. We just hope her workers' comp is up to date. Bernice ain't going to no hospital. Hospitals are for rich people. And my Obama can't kick in yet. So fans went crazy on Twitter for Bernice, whose real name is KK Brunson, and so many people were even calling for the reboot of the show, so we knew that we had to track her down and ask the question, where are you now? <laughs> So on that note, and without further ado, joining us is the muscle from Miami herself, KK Brunson. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing great. I mean, look, that iconic moment of you flying off the edge of the parking garage on South Beach Toe is one of the craziest moments of reality TV history. So can you tell us a bit more about that moment? And were you doing your own stunts or did, we, did you have help? Well, at the time, we were doing our own stunts and everything like that. 
I mean, it was crazy because, like I said, uh, I didn't even think this thing would go viral. That was one of the longest days we had, but, you know, it was fun always working with my guys. Um, it was a little, you know, I was younger back then. All that stuff, it was adrenaline. Yeah, that'll do it. But I'm guessing a, a few aches and pains the next day. Yeah. <laughs> Well, look, I mean, we'd love to know what you've been up to since your stint on reality uh, television. So can you fill us in? Well, um, I done did everything, a little bit of everything. Um, I was the first female head football coach in Miami, well, in Florida, period. So I made history with that. That's incredible. Um, I coached over, uh, I coached a male football team, which is really big in Florida, especially in Miami. Um, I coached with um, Uncle Luke for a little bit of, in my first year and then after that you know took on my own identity um that was what might have been the hardest thing i've ever done and um you know i did an independent movie this summer with uh dave as you guys know on the show and you know we're gonna see how that goes so most of all i work with kids most of the time and i'm a dean of discipline as you know and i coach a little bit here and do all of that things there so most of the time, I'm just working with kids, and if I can get back on TV, I will, but, you know, my calling is my calling. When it's time, it's time. Yeah, well, Still look, I mean... that bread. Yeah, well, fans are very vocal about the fact that they want South Beach Toe to come back. There is a Change.org petition <laughs> out there, so would you be down for a reboot of the show? Hell yeah. All right, well, J-Lo, make it happen. I'm always down for it. <laughs> We're going to get J-Lo to make it happen, because I think that would make the fans very happy. Um, well, look, KK, thank you so much for Skyping in with us today. Congratulations on everything, being a trailblazer, the independent film. Can't wait to see that. And fingers crossed for that reboot. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're so welcome. Peace. Peace. Uh, all right, well, don't go anywhere, you guys. When we come back, I have got another reality TV history moment you will not want to miss, so stay tuned. Well, that is it for today's show, but I would like to say a big thank you to Boston Rob, KK Bernice Brunson, Dave Quinn, and, of course, Andrea Belke. Make sure you are following at people on Twitter so you can catch the latest episode of Reality Check. That streams Monday through Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Now, to wrap us out, here is a moment with a couple of queens making a splash. I am Lindsay Rodriguez, and I will check you tomorrow. Bye. You can come down the runway and look like you've stepped off a Rodeo Drive like a goddamn supermodel. I will never look like that. True. You'll never be glam. In this 2011 episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, Shangela and Mimi Um First are discussing their latest looks when Mimi suddenly accuses Shangela of having a sugar daddy. Boo, just because you got a sugar daddy who pays for everything for you. Oh. A claim that Shangela hotly denies. I don't have a sugar daddy, sweetheart. Everything that I've had, I've worked for. Well, making it crystal clear she could get one if she was so inclined. If I wanted a sugar daddy, yes, I probably could go out and get one because I am what? Sickening. Shangela's sugar daddy rant is one of the greatest moments in reality history, a moment she lands with a splash. Bitch! Oh. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. no.